Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is a kind of a, a, a seminar that is a little bit independent from yesterday's workshop. Uh, today's uh, the goal uh, is to basically make presentations that can be understood by non-specialists of uh, the kinds of things we are doing. So our aim is to be able to uh, show and, and kind of convince uh, people that are uh, music uh, lovers of, uh, of Carnatic music that uh, the kinds of uh, technologies that we are working on can be of use beyond our work and our articles and that uh, can be of relevance to, to the community. So please, if you feel that there is something that cannot be understood in that way, you can uh, stop and ask questions and because that's the whole goal, is to make sure that uh, we convey uh, to just music lovers uh, the potential of the kinds of things we do. So the, the, the day is organized uh, with, uh, I will first give uh, an introductory presentation, uh, a little bit of the project in general. Uh, then we will have, a, a, I guess the next talk would be the, a demonstration of uh, an outcome of the project that uh, shows a little bit uh, the, the ideas that we have been working on and, and what we want to work towards. And then after the coffee break, there will be a little bit more technical presentations, but again with the idea of trying to, to approach uh, these uh, technologies uh, uh, to people that uh, might not be specialists. And then after lunch in the afternoon, there will be panel discussions uh, with, uh, with musicians and uh, musicologists uh, to talk about these things and to see uh, what are interesting things could be done from now on and uh, what things are more relevant and what things uh, may not be so relevant. Um, so I will start. And so first of all, I have to, to uh, uh, thank uh, uh, IIT Madras and especially Professor Hema Murthy for uh, having uh, put together these, uh, these three days. Um, I think this is very important for us uh, in, uh, in this project in Com Music. Um, we have been working very closely and we are now reaching uh, the middle of the project. So it's a very good opportunity to uh, be able to show uh, the results to, to you and to the community and, uh, and, uh, and make sure that what we are doing is of relevance to, to people. Um, so um, you might know that Com Music is an European project, but uh, it's, uh, it has a very strong Indian um, uh, contribution. And especially in the area of Indian music, uh, we are collaborating very strongly with uh, Professor Priti Rao from IIT Bombay and Professor Hema Murthy from here from IIT Madras. And so we have been basically putting together a team of people, of PhD students, uh, researchers, that we have uh, been working very closely to develop a number of things that of course they are in progress, but uh, we feel that uh, it was time to, to, to show things uh, to the outside. Uh, um, the technologies can be of use for many things. Technology is not something that uh, the type of technologies that we have developed that have a very particular application. The idea and the, normally the good technologies uh, can have a, an impact beyond a, a niche type of approach. But in order to demonstrate better the technologies, we have been focusing on some application ideas and some scenarios that uh, we believe can showcase better some of these technologies. And uh, I guess the, the overall umbrella that uh, uh, we have been using as a, as a theme, as a user case uh, that can uh, showcase that is the idea of music exploration. So uh, the idea is that uh, the tools we have been developing, we believe can be used to explore music and to explore music uh, by Rasikas, by people that are music lovers, that they know about the music and they are interested in, in approaching uh, and, and navigating through a music collection in a more sophisticated way than just turning on the, 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 an iPod and, and, and listening to the music. Uh, so, so that's the idea. That's the idea that uh, in this, uh, today we want to try to, to, to frame that uh, these technologies can be used by a music lover 
to uh, approach and to learn more. So it has these, uh, these uh, uh, pedagogical and, uh, and uh, kind of uh, teaching type of aspect that uh, we are trying to promote. OK, so as I said, um, COM Music is a European project funded by the European Research Council. The European Research Council is kind of a new initiative in Europe which uh, has uh, changed quite a bit the research funding landmark in Europe with the aim to really um, sponsor research uh, without uh, much boundaries, uh, very much open to the world. Anyone can apply to them. Of course, the research has to be done mainly in Europe, but it uh, uh, can be basically carried, uh, carried out everywhere. Um, so basically, when I proposed uh, this project, they were very interested, and uh, so they, they, they sponsored it. So the project is uh, called Com Music, and uh, the long title is Computational Models for the Discovery of the World's Music. Um, it was started um, I, uh, I, uh, two years and a half ago, practically, and it's funded by five years. So as I said, we are basically in the middle. And it's, it has a budget of 2.5 million euros, which is a lot. It's a lot of money for a research project uh, in our field, for sure. So that means that the aims are very big, and, uh, and the people involved are many. Uh, there are more than like 30 researchers working in this project. India is just one part of that. It's the biggest. But uh, there is other countries in which uh, we are working on. OK, let me try to motivate a little bit uh, the, the project and uh, why uh, uh, we came to do uh, what uh, we're doing. Um, I guess uh, most researchers are working in information technologies um, and basically in, in, in all kinds of te technological fields are, have uh, a view of the world that is becoming uh, very globalized. So the idea of a view that technology allows us uh, to communicate among us, and that has converted the world into a very interconnected uh, uh, place that uh, we talk to each other, we interact with each other, we share the same technologies, we all use Facebook, we all use Google, and sort of uh, has allowed us to, to become basically a, a unified kind of world. Um, in the case of music, um, that's very clear too. The technologies that are being developed nowadays and that are being used all around the world to access music and even to create music are very much kind of the same everywhere. Uh, tools like uh, the iTunes or, uh, other, uh, or other tools are basically are uh, everywhere and we use them to navigate through any kinds of music. And we, we kind of are, are happy about that. We, most of us uh, believe that that's, uh, that's the way to do it. And even the, the kind of the companies that are localizing their technologies, for example, Amazon. Um, uh, for example, in fact, in one of my trips uh, around India, I, I was sitting next to the, the person responsible from Amazon for localizing Amazon to India. Uh, so his, uh, his only worry was basically to translate the website, to make sure that uh, the website uh, included the content of India, not much worry about local languages, but a little bit that it, it was able to support uh, the, the, the content uh, the, that you would be able to sell the uh, books. But basically, the architecture, the way to navigate through that is, every, uh, is the same everywhere where you go. So with this kind of framework, I was invited by Professor Hema Murthy and uh, Priti Rao uh, uh, a little more than three years ago, and I realized that this is very wrong. That uh, basically, uh, the, there is, uh, the world has many different cultures, and when you deal with culture-related material, like music, there is no way you can unify uh, the technology across the world. There is no way that you can use the same technology here than the same technology in the US or in Europe. So uh, I came out of that visit with the clear view that the information technologies should deal with cultural diversity, the cultural richness of the world. Uh, engineers, we have been traditionally 
uh, very far from culture. We have been sort of uh, very agnostic. We say that, okay, uh, our technology is, uh, doesn't have to do anything with culture. It's just some basic tools that anyone can use, everyone should use, and uh, it doesn't have any political, social, or cultural connotations. And that's definitely not true. Um, so that's uh, what uh, triggered basically this project and, uh, and the, the, tra the, the way to approach this issue has been, of course, through music and uh, the idea through trying to make sense of musical data, tra trying to make sense of musical data that is of a particular culture. Uh, so trying to make sense of CDs, editorial metadata, uh, lyrics, of different countries, of different parts of the world, and that each one might have a different way to, to, to be used and that has to be handled in a different way. So um, we selected five musical cultures of the world, of course, that with this attitude, the idea is that you cannot just work on music. You have to work on particular types of music. So of course, it, uh, it uh, seems uh, the idea started here uh, uh, clearly, Carnatic and Hindustani music were uh, the two first uh, choices to, to work with. Uh, but then also, we decided to work on Arab Andalusian music, Beijing opera, and Turkish makam. So maybe you're not so familiar with these types of music. Let me just play a little bit. Of course, I won't play Carnatic and Hindustani, but let me just play a little bit of Arab Andalusian music, which is the music tradition that is maintained in the Maghreb, in the north of Africa, that in fact was born in what is now Spain, when Spain was a, an Arab country. So that's something uh, very, uh, or it should be something very close to me, but in Spain we basically have completely forgotten all that uh, amazing uh, cultural tradition that was born there and that now is maintained in the north of Africa. So let me just play you a little bit of this uh, uh, music. Okay, let me play a bit of Turkish Makam. play some uh, Beijing opera.
Okay, so um, all of them are classical music traditions in, for which there is a lot of musicological studies available and they cannot be approached uh, naively and as, as, as if they were some popular music. Uh, we really have to take into account all this uh, tradition and musicological research that is behind. Um, most of our work has been on analyzing the audio, the recordings. So uh, you, will, you will see uh, this, uh, this, uh, our work on this. And another important part uh, that we are not yet working so much is trying to understand the users. The music cannot be understood as an object detached from a community. So the users, the community that is supporting it, the, the, the community that, that, that is listening to that music, that is making that music, is fundamental to understand the music. We cannot understand the music detached from that community. Um, and so the idea is to combine all this research into what I said, this kind of a, an application scenario to basically prove that this research is of relevance. So the idea of dunya and this idea of music exploration, you, you don't have to see it as, as kind of the, the research focus, but it's kind of the, uh, the, the research uh, outcome, research application, or the research evaluation of uh, what we are doing, the way to, to prove and to uh, our ideas. And we believe that the work stands by itself, a lot of the research we do, so it can be applied to other things. Okay, but we are engineers, so basically uh, we work with engineering methodologies. And uh, the goal of uh, basically, as I, as, I, as I said today, is to try to prove and to convince you that engineering has something to say to music. And that there is engineering approaches, engineering methodologies that can be of relevance to musicians or to music lovers. And basically, in our project, we use three types of engineering methodologies. The first one is signal processing. This is basically at the core of a lot of uh, us, what we have been trained as, and uh, is uh, the idea of the technologies that allow us to take a signal, in, in our case, uh, an audio signal, and um, uh, analyze it and represent it uh, in, a, in another domain, uh, extracting some revel relevant aspects of that signal and basically um, uh, convert it into something that might be useful for a particular application. For example, this is a spectrogram. Uh, on top you have the, the audio signal, and on the bottom you have the spectrogram. And uh, we believe that the spectrogram is useful for people, even to watch it. And, uh, and um, we have been, of course, most of us have been very accustomed to, to visualize these things, but uh, we tend to believe, and I would like to prove you, that you might enjoy yourself looking at these things while you listen to the music. Uh, if we don't succeed, then we are in big trouble, because that's, uh, that's one of the basic assumptions that we have, is that this type of visualization uh, can be of relevance, and that you can even learn to, to, to appreciate it, and that it can, uh, it can add some value to your uh, uh, listening experience. So this is one type of technology. Another type of technology that we're very much using is what is called machine learning. This kind of, it's a newer area, and especially for many of us, uh, that has been evolving very quickly in the last, let's say, 20 years or uh, 10 years, especially for music. Um, and the idea of machine learning is a way to basically take into account the user. Uh, this signal processing approach, the one I just mentioned, basically is based on analyzing the sound. Machine learning is based on being able to, on top of our audio signal, um, being able to learn something from some label information, from some information from a user, from some uh, ground truth or from sound uh, some uh, uh, label data that some people have created, and the system, the computer, using machine learning techniques, is able to try to convert this human understanding into some machine values. So for example, in this case, this is the model with which we can, uh, we can uh, try to analyze the tonic of uh, an audio signal, and this is something that 
uh, uh, we will talk uh, later, Sankal will, will talk about that. But basically, it's a way to capture uh, something that is uh, basically very much perceptual or very much uh, related with how we listen to the tonic uh, and then encapsulate that and make an algorithm that can automatically do what basically what we do. It's, it's not trying to really imitate human cognition perception, but at least from a functional point of view, is trying to do the same function. Okay. And finally, the last uh, technology that uh, we are uh, working on, um, and this is uh, even more recent, let's say, especially for many of us, is uh, what is called semantic analysis, or all the technologies uh, that sometimes are called for the semantic web. Um, and this is uh, very much uh, uh, coming from, um, from areas uh, that have developed through uh, the, the need to structure data. So the idea is that uh, data, the, the data that we're working on is, is, is huge, is very diverse, and we need to structure it in the same way that we make relationships between things. So for example, these, and we, uh, we'll talk about, Gopal will talk about that, this is what is called ontologies. This is a way for a machine to understand the relationships that exist within a Raga concept. So this is the, the concepts behind a Raga, and of course, uh, as we all know, Raga is a very kind of ill-defined, very kind of fuzzy, everyone may talk about it, and it's very difficult to verbalize what it is, we engineers need to, to put that into a very concrete uh, uh, way that then machines can handle it. And the way we, we, we uh, abstract the concept of Raga is with this type of thing, with this type of graphs that try to capture the essence of what people, what musicologists say a Raga is. And if we succeed in doing that, then machines will be able to process uh, a lot of the data in a much more intelligent way. So this is approaching uh, a way to, to deal with uh, knowledge that until now has been very difficult to grasp in a, in a concrete way. And then so with this type of technologies, what can we do in this particular scenario of musical exploration? So in musical exploration, um, we are able to basically uh, search and organize and, and navigate through musical concepts. And uh, uh, musical concepts, of course, that are engineeringly defined. So one is the concept of melodic patterns. So one fundamental issue in music is the concept of patterns. Uh, and in melody, that's uh, clearly so. Uh, in every culture, these type of patterns may be organized in a different way and might have different meaning. and. Uh, maybe uh, uh, would have to be approached in a different way. But uh, one idea that we can develop tools, technologies, with which to explore patterns, repetitions, uh, within a musical piece, within the musical collection, uh, that's uh, for us a very important goal and a very important aim of our research. In parallel to, to melody, uh, uh, rhythm, the same thing. Uh, uh, the organization of rhythm is uh, based on the idea of patterns, on repetitions, on similarity. So we want to be able to explore these patterns and be able to make them explicit, something that a listener does in an in a implicit way and, uh, and that uh, you, you, you remember certain things and you appreciate certain things by uh, perceiving these relationships, try to make it explicit so to help people uh, uh, appreciate uh, some rhythmic uh, aspect of a piece of music. And finally, um, semantic relationships. And this is a, maybe a more kind of difficult uh, concept to grasp. But the idea is that one important thing in music is when you establish relationships, when, when a listener is able to establish relationship between artists, between concepts, and you are able to establish uh, an, a network of relationships between all what you're listening, what you know about the music, 
what you know about uh, a, given, uh, a given tradition. And this is basically encapsulated under, under the concept of semantic relationship. We want to make explicit these relationships that we all have when we listen to music, that we all make when we listen to music and when we talk about music. So to make relationship between, between artists, between songs, between ragas, between talas. And that's uh, the, the major aim. So this is, with this technology, the signal processing, machine learning, and uh, semantic analysis, we are aiming to find these type of things. And then we, we uh, have developed a, a system that if, as, as you will have a, a demonstration just next. But of course, it's, it's still work in progress. But at least it's a framework within which we will put all these technologies, all these tools, and uh, hopefully we'll be, with which we'll be able to justify, to convince you that uh, these technologies are of use because this will be a useful application. Again, not the only one, but a useful one. Okay. This is definitely not a product. We, we, are not the, we are not a company. We are not uh, trying to develop uh, a product. This is just a way to show the technologies and hopefully then people that uh, have content, owned uh, this, uh, this uh, content, these recordings, this, uh, this information, would be able to use these technologies to organize, make sense of their data. And, um, and basically, to, to, to finish, uh, I want to explain why did I choose, why did we choose Carnatic music, in fact, as the main emphasis? Because this is in uh, Dunia, currently, it only, we are starting with Carnatic music. Of all the five music traditions, why did Carnatic music uh, became the, the so prominent for us, and why is in fact uh, we are working on it so much? I, I think it's uh, Carnatic music is, is a very special. Uh, uh, see, I have to say that three years ago I just knew the name of Carnatic music. Uh, now I know a little bit more, not much more, but I know a little bit more uh, about Carnatic music, and I have become fascinated by it. But of course, I cannot appreciate the music. Uh, that much. I, I enjoy going to concerts, but I cannot appreciate it uh, that much. But I, what I have been fascinated by, on top of the music, is by the community, by uh, the fact of uh, being a, a, a community, an amazingly active community, with a lot of stakeholders, with a lot of, uh, of people involved in it, with, a, with, a, with an attitude that, is, in fact, I, I think is the first time that I have seen so many engineers being musicians too, uh, or musicians being engineers. Uh, there is so many uh, engineers around here that makes it very easy, I think, to talk about these things in this community, which might be much harder in many other uh, communities. Uh, and there is all these people uh, trying to do things with it, with Carnatic music, that uh, I think makes it that I believe it's, a, it's an ideal scenario in which to try out these technologies, to try to bring the community to, 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 to use these type of technologies, and of course then maybe export it to other musical cultures. So for me, I see it as, as, a, as a, a great kind of uh, uh, use case, uh, uh, test case of a very special situation for many things. Uh, both also in terms of the, of course, the characteristics of the music, but again, more because of the people and the community and, and, uh, and, and things like the, the music academy and the festival that is happening uh, starting now and things that makes it an amazing uh, uh, context in which I believe these type of technologies uh, can be uh, of use and can be tried and proven to be useful. So, but basically, the, the success of com music, so the success of these technologies, um, cannot be uh, by the technology itself. I mean, one of the things that not many engineers are w aware enough is that technology is a tiny component of what we do. Technology, in fact, I don't think the technology is the bottleneck of what we are doing. It's not the, the innovation at the technological level. The, the innovation happens at the cultural level, at the social level, and to take up these technologies. There are great technologies that have never been taken and they have never been of, uh, used by the people, even though they were great technologies. So it was not the fault of the technology, it was not the, 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 the success of the technology, it was how it was able to, to be 
put into, into practice, into action by, by the people, by a given community. So uh, a project like Come Music that aims to be very ambitious is impossible to succeed by us engineers working in our labs and developing the best technology we can. It, it, it will only succeed if we uh, are able to collaborate with musicians, we are able to collaborate with companies, with institutions, with people that are the ones that make Carnatic music what it is now and that they can embrace and basically uh, uh, use this technology to, to add some value to what they already do. Of course, we are not going to invent something completely new, but we hope that we can add some value to the things that are already going on here. And uh, with that, I would like to finish, so thank you very much. <laughs>